and wait, more for want of a better name than anything else, a lump together under the term concept art or conceptual art. Now, for in retrospect, the artistic approaches and intentions of the artists involved in the foundation of conceptual art prove to have been far too heterogeneous for us to talk of a unitary style or even of an artistic movement. Now, this term conceptual art is like an umbrella term. It embraces a whole lot of art activities that has come into being from 1960s onwards till today in various disguises, in various forms, employing different kinds of mediums. So, breaking the barriers, this very term suggests not only radicalizing your idea about art or what we expect from art, but it is also about searching, continuously searching new mediums, new methods, and new concepts of art, where even objects can be um, reduced to an idea, or an idea can completely dominate Art, the idea that art is an aesthetic object. And we have seen that happening quite early in 1917. Undoubtedly, that was the most radical moment when Master Dushman installed this porcelain urinal as an exhibit in an art exhibition. Since then, various artists at different points of time have attempted a new form and idea of art that helped the history of modern art to push its horizon gradually and continuously as far as possible. In terms of medium, object, and also an idea, we have seen this extremely uncanny object placed as an artwork by Man Ray way back in early 20th century. We have seen how Picasso used completely unassuming objects like a bicycle seat and a bicycle handle, but juxtaposed in a certain way appeared to be something different, like a bull, and he called it a bull. But still, all these works are representational in nature until 1972, when Cristo made this valley, uh, valley curtain in Colorado Valley in USA and radicalized the whole idea of what is art. He changed not only the idea of art as an object, but he also changed the location of idea. So Cristo not only offered a new form of art, but claimed a new kind of space for art. And that is huge in scale and massive in dimension. Thereby, claiming a physical space and occupying it with art, Christo introduced the idea of infinity in art. Like this one as well. Then, we have a unique example, like Banksy. We do not know the real name of this artist, but he is popularly known as Banksy. An artist who keeps himself underground, but he keeps doing this highly provocative and potentially political painting on the walls of the streets of the USA of England and various other places. So graffiti, in other words, following Banksy, there are many such graffiti artists who have radicalized the idea of art, the meaning of art, they use 
use of R, the technique of R, by doing them on the wall, not just as simple, innocent neural painting, but as highly social and political in terms of its content and in terms of its objective. Probably that is why many of these graffiti artists have to remain underground also because there is a legal issue in occupying a public wall with your art which you don't own. Nevertheless, these graffitis by Banksy and other artists all over the world have become immensely popular and it has created almost a new genre in the contemporary art. We have already seen in one of our previous lectures this mind-blowing work by this Brazilian sculptor, Nele Azevedo, who arranged 5,000 little ice pelerins on the step of Chamberlain Square in Birmingham, UK, to remember the men and women lost during World War I, including the civilians. And what happened later, if you remember, that all these melting, ghostly figures placed by volunteers created a truly haunting event, and they were crowned by a red figure that seemed to drip a trail of blood down the stage. So, yes, art is object here. Art is representational here, but art is also happening here. That is, it is a kind of cultural installation which has to be experienced over a period of time as the figures keep melting slowly and gradually. It is not a one shot or a one snap kind of being. It has to, the experience has to allow the sculpture to run its course right in front of the viewer. And it is then that this kind of works make some sense. By allowing art to invade the public space, functional space and common space, outside the sacred box of the dedicated gallery space, artists have opened up new possibilities of extending art to further usages and meanings. By breaking the barriers, it is also meant that gallery space or museum space is not necessarily the only space where art has to be viewed, where art has to be displayed. Art can be displayed in many significant spaces outside this white cube. This is how the gallery is known in the West, because it is enclosed and it is sanctified. And also, according to many artists, it is highly commercial. But you want to make art meaningful for the public, meaningful to the society. If that is what you want, then you need to take out of the white cube or gallery. And there has been a lot of artists all over the world who are trying that out all the time. And that leads us to this very interesting idea of making art interactive. Making people go to the art, sit on the art, touch the art. And this goes extremely opposed to the idea that art cannot be touched. It challenges the so-called sanctity of art. So by breaking the conventional barriers of conventional modern art, the new forms of art is not only to be viewed or looked at, it is something that demands a participation. Physically interactive artworks can spark the imagination of many contemporary artists. And you have a whole range of examples of artworks being done today, where the viewers are expected to physically interact with the work of art, and that is how the art becomes meaningful. The art makes some sense. We are talking about conceptual art, which, according to Daniel Marzona again, is uh, an idea that first cropped up 
in an American context in 1961. In his essay of the same name, published in 1963, Henry Flint, an artist, uses the term to refer to a kind of art whose actual distinguishing feature is the way it deals with language, not the way it deals with the visual language, but the verbal language, the conceptual language. A few years later, the term concept art had already been replaced by conceptual art. This term was invented by Sam Levitt, an artist whose works from the outset had not been exclusively language oriented. His essays, like Paragraphs on Conceptual Art, 1967, and Sentences on Conceptual Art, 1969, brought the term to the attention of a broader public and, in a sense, specified what was to be understood by it. In 1969, the English artist's group Art and Language published the first number of the magazine Art Language, which was subtitled The Journal of Conceptual Art. And the same year, the young concept artist Joseph Kosu, whose work we see right now on the monitor, he declared that all art after Dushan is conceptual in nature because art only exists conceptually. Now, it is difficult to engage with Joseph Kosu's work, but once you know about it, you read about his works, it becomes increasingly clear that Joseph Kosu's position vis a vis art or the idea of art is extremely different from whatever we have seen in the name of art so far till the last lecture, till pop art. Because he is no more dealing with art as a visual object. He is dealing with art as an idea, art as a concept, art as a language. So that is why he problematizes even the idea of representation through intellect, through language, and through various means, like a photograph, like a real chair, and like reprinting what the dictionary or how the dictionary has to define a chair. So, for him, it is one chair that has been defined in different ways, but it has also become three chairs. And that is how he has titled this work, One and Three Chairs. Now, Joseph Kosuth was the artist, perhaps one of the earliest artists to have gone to the extent of creating a canvas where you do not find a single visual element. It is entirely textual. And he makes it very, very clear in this title because the title of this work is Art as Idea as Idea. So art is not visual. And remember that he made this piece of painting in 1966. So when Daniel Mardona is addressing in this essay the, the definition of conceptual art. The author says, so what is or what to be understood by the term conceptual art? One way or another, all the essays by artists mentioned above express the fact that within conceptual art there is an emphasis on the thought component of art and its perception. In the course of the 1960s, normative definitions of art began to crumble. That is the conventional definitions of art as an aesthetic object began to crumble. And that younger artists, often with an excellent academic education, started to reinterpret the essence of art in extended analysis. Thus, not only art itself, but also its institutional context became the center of attention subjected to comprehensive criticism in artistic practice, many artists expressed their worries about traditional forms of marketing art, and so ways were sought of getting away from the idea of artworks as decorative objects for well-heeled buyers. So it created a problem also in the art market, with new definitions of art, with new ways of looking at art. 
And there was another group of artists, like John Michel Basquiat, who was up on his heels to renunciate the stylistic authorship. For artists like him, it doesn't make any sense to create a signature style by which a particular artist would be recognized or known. But one easy way out was, like Rothenberg did, like many other artists did previously, to use collage. Now, interestingly, in many of his paintings, Basquiat is not directly using collage, but he is deliberately and directly using different kinds of styles which do not have any signature tune. Styles which do not claim any authority. They could be done by anybody, though the idea is his own. And then, of course, we have somebody like Joseph Boyce, who was one of the pioneers in what we today understand as performance art. That art is no more about a particular aesthetic object, but if it is about a performance, which is different for, from performing arts like a theater or a choreography. It is about on a real life performance where artist may put himself or herself a huge risk. Yet, this is something that has to be seen by the spectators and has to be understood in terms of the concept or the idea that is being explored through this performance. Now, at the same time, it is also true that Besides getting very conceptual and thereby getting very cerebral, many artists all over the world from after 1960s, from 1970s, and very much in 1980s, were also trying to explore the possibility of the new age technological devices like computer, digital technology different kinds of new media and of course the possibilities of interdisciplinary art. For example, there was a time, for example, when you look at Spirin Nesha's work, when people had used their own body in exchange of a canvas and a paper. And now we have reached a time when people are going to use a very indirect method like a digital technology. And an indication of that, that how art has changed radically so much that the masterpieces have become so expensive, has become so much like a cult figure, has been addressed by an artist called Terry Levin which has been titled very appropriately like Appropriation of Marcel Duchamp, Fountain, but done in 1991. So, appropriating not only the cutting edge technologies, but also the previous works of art with a sense of irony, sometimes with a sense of satire, and sometimes by a sense of challenge has also been a way to break the barriers of reverence. So irreverence has become, which we have already seen way back in Dada's movement, but in contemporary art, it has taken new shapes and new ideas and new forms. At the end of this lecture, I would like to show you two video clippings. In the first one, you will see a wonderful piece of video installation by a Korean artist. And in the second one, you will see a great piece of Another glimpse 
from a very well known art pair called Prince Art Pair in England. In both these videos, we will have an idea that how exactly art has changed completely in its form to the extent that an art exhibition doesn't look like a typical art exhibition. It almost looks like a science exhibition. It almost looks like a commercial publicity exhibition. It almost looks like a spectacular exhibition of creation of various kinds of objects, which may be called art or not. That is up to us. But there's a whole lot of innovations that have been going on. So to begin with, we will look at a video installation art, which was first shown in a Santa Cruz, Bolivia, Biennale, uh, a few years back. Art today can be looked at 
as something that is very complicated. To say the least, it is very complex. But at the same time, it has also become extremely challenging and complicated, both for the artist and for the viewers, thereby making it even more interesting and beauty. Thank you.